Tonight, I want to talk about the National Rifle Association. You know the NRA. The only time they're quiet is whenever we have a national moment of silence. <laughs> and if you haven't been watching the news, they're currently in total chaos. America's most prominent gun rights organization, with one of the nation's most powerful lobbying arms, is in turmoil. The NRA is facing a major shakeup after its current president, Oliver North, announced he would be stepping down and not returning for a second term. North reportedly attempted to oust Wayne LaPierre. Basically, Wayne LaPierre, their longtime chief executive, was beefing with their president, Oliver North. Last month, LaPierre accused North of trying to extort him over financial wrongdoing, and LaPierre was right to worry because North had the receipts. And they show that LaPierre was burning through money like it was a rookie contract, including <laughs> almost 40 grand for clothes on a single day, 18 grand for a car and driver in Europe, and $13,800 in rent payments for a college intern. That's right. <laughs> Wayne LaPierre, who's almost 70, tried to expense five grand a month for a 20-something female intern. And I know we're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> Wayne LaPierre has a heart of gold. <laughs> Don't laugh! Her summer housing didn't work out and she needed a place to stay. <laughs> we need more people like Wayne LaPierre. <laughs> this internal feud resulted in Oliver North stepping down as president, but that was just the beginning of the NRA's problems. The New York Attorney General is currently investigating whether the NRA has violated their status as a nonprofit. And I know you're like, wait, the NRA is a nonprofit? <laughs> That's like finding out Guantanamo Bay was built by Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> the guard would be like, that rectal feeding tube is actually made out of Jimmy Carter's old garden hose, so you respect it. <laughs> Now, all this turmoil came to a head at the NRA's annual convention last month. But while everybody was obsessing over the NRA meltdown, something else was going down. This is a Fox News alert. President Trump making moves to pull the U.S. out of an international arms trade treaty, something the NRA has wanted for a very long time. Trump pulled the U.S. out of the arms trade treaty, which was a U.N. resolution Obama signed in 2013 to help prevent the use of arms for war crimes, and human rights abuses. But don't take it from me. Take it from the host of my dad's favorite TV show. The UN Arms Trade Treaty. It asks signatories not to export weapons to groups or states which could use these weapons in crimes against humanity. Simple enough. Don't send arms to Syria or Sudan or North Korea. Who could object to this? Who could object to this? Well, Bashar al-Assad, Kim Jong-un, and obviously, Terry Gross. Terry Gross <laughs> has been running guns into Darfur for decades. It makes total sense when you think about it. Look, she does one interview a day and she's somehow always on vacation. Come on, Terry. If you're not gonna stop running guns, then at least stop letting Dave Davies fill in for you. <laughs> you're hurting people. <laughs> the NRA hates the UN Arms Trade Treaty because they think it will lead to gun control in the United States. That's basically how they feel about everything the UN does, which you can tell from this super emo video they made. The UN's agenda? To impose its own standard of freedom, global gun prohibition. A bronze statue of a twisted gun outside UN headquarters stands as testimony to its agenda and its determination to fulfill it. The NRA is obsessed <laughs> with this gun that got its tubes tied. It's known <laughs> as the knotted gun and it is a universal symbol for nonviolence. And the NRA saw that and was like, nonviolence over my dead body. <laughs> the NRA has official consulting status with the UN, which is bizarre. How could the NRA possibly be helpful at the UN? <laughs> Think about it, like Zambia comes in, they're like, we need mosquito nets. And they're like, have you tried shooting the mosquitoes? <laughs> you have the right to shoot the mosquitoes. The NRA, has been opposing the arms trade treaty for years. There is extremely strong opposition to this treaty in the United States, all based on the same objection, infringement on the constitutional freedom of American gun owners. We are not gonna submit American freedoms to these globalist vultures. Is this how Wayne LaPierre describes nature? He's like, you got your globalist vultures, your libtard geckos, and your cuck trees. It's disgusting. <laughs> But just last month, 
Trump gave the NRA what they wanted. We're taking our signature back. <laughs> they all want the pen. Can you believe these people? Should I give it to them? <laughs> Famous pen. Just imagine all the manifestos that are gonna be written with that pen. This is why we can't be touchdown dancing all over the NRA Civil War. Pulling out of the arms trade treaty was a significant win for them on an international scale. And that's what I wanna focus on tonight, the global impact of the NRA. Now, I know that sounds strange. When you think of the NRA, you think of American gun rights, the Second Amendment, cowboy cosplay, gun shows. <laughs> The easier it is for people in other countries to buy guns, the better it is for American gun makers who want to do business in those places. So the NRA has been influencing gun policy, exporting gun culture, and contributing to gun violence around the world. The NRA has actually been called the spiritual godfather of foreign gun groups, which I know sounds like a gangster movie starring Deepak Chopra, but <laughs> the NRA also has direct financial ties to foreign gun companies. Some of their biggest donors are international gun manufacturers like Beretta and Glock, who have each donated at least a million dollars to the NRA, which makes them members of an exclusive donors club called the Golden Ring of Freedom, where one of the perks is a special jacket. When I put the gold jacket on, I'll feel the respect of 1,600 employees. It is a great honor. The NRA gave Brenda and I gold jackets <laughs> because we give them a lot of money. You don't need the NRA to get an ugly overpriced jacket. Just order one from Canada Goose. I own one, it's ugly as fuck, objectively. Okay? By the way, they ripped this jacket straight from the NFL Hall of Fame, which makes total sense if you think about it. Football and guns, have both given high schoolers brain trauma. Oh. Now, another reason the NRA <laughs> is working abroad is that they seem to think that gun control anywhere is a threat to gun rights everywhere. Take Australia. The NRA has tried to repeatedly weaken Australia's strict gun laws, including the ones passed after a mass shooting in 1996 called the Port Arthur Massacre. Look what happened in Australia. When they had a huge shooting in Port Arthur, the conservative government banned assault weapons. For the next couple of decades, there's been not even one single mass shooting in Australia. And the NRA was like, what kind of sick world are we living in? We need to help these people get guns. <laughs> and then they got a call from a group in Australia called One Nation. Now, separately, those words don't seem racist. <laughs> but when you put them together, they do. Right, it's like America first. <laughs> Duck Dynasty. <laughs> Roseanne. Just Roseanne. <laughs> One Nation is a right-wing nationalist party, and this is their co-founder, Pauline Hansen. I do not believe in seeing the full burqa, any full facial covering at all anywhere in Australia. This uh, feeling pity, sorry for, um, for what the whites have done to people in this nation, I think it's disgusting. If he truly wanted to kill his family, he would have done it one way or another. So don't blame the guns. We are in danger of being swamped by Asians. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, take it easy, Pauline. <laughs> Asians don't swamp, we infiltrate, there's a difference. <laughs> Last year, some members of One Nation came to America to meet with the NRA, except one of them wasn't a member. He was an undercover journalist. And guess which one? Yeah, look at him. <laughs> no Australian is that Australian. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? He could have just worn a suit, but he just went to the store and he's like, give me all the khaki money can buy. <laughs> Let me look like crocodile motherfucking Dundee while I go undercover. Now, this undercover journalist secretly recorded the One Nation members who came to America. The fake activist then led One Nation Chief of Staff James Ashby and Queensland Senate candidate Steve Dixon on a trip to America to seek donations from the US gun lobby. If they threw $10 million at us, we'd win a heap of seats, plenty of seats in the Senate. And while they were there, the NRA gave them talking points 
including what to say in response to a mass shooting. Lars Delside is one of the NRA's senior media liaison officers. If another mass shooting happens in Australia, he advises One Nation to smear supporters of gun control by accusing them of exploiting the tragedy. How dare you stand on the graves of those children to put forth your political agenda? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're shame them to the whole idea. I love that. That guy is getting a lesson on how to spin the murder of children, and he's reacting like he just heard Uptown Funk for the first time. <laughs> he's like, I love that. What is this? <laughs> when that clip hit the internet, One Nation reps faced a lot of backlash, but they had an airtight response. I'll be the first to admit, we'd arrived in America, we'd got on the source, we'd had a few drinks, and that's where those discussions took place. They were on the sauce. <laughs> I can't tell if they came to America to meet the NRA or have the best summer of their lives before they go to college. <laughs> you know what? You know what? It's fine. They apologized. They lived. They learned. But then, a month later, more footage leaked. A salacious strip club video has brought down one of Pauline Hanson's most trusted Senate candidates. As secret footage of a One Nation Queensland Senate candidate Steve Dixon emerged from the shadows to spotlight a hands-on booze fueled September night out at a seedy Washington strip club. Yeah. All right, that's gross. <laughs> but how much did they trust Khaki Guy? <laughs> They're like... Hey man, like, why isn't Dave getting any lap dances? And why is his armpit blinking? They're like, whatever. He's our friend, we trust him. No one has been able to roll back Australia's gun laws. So the NRA is trying to make sure nobody else pulls an Australia, which hasn't been easy, especially in New Zealand after the Christchurch shooting. Six days, that's how long it's been since the deadly mosque shooting in New Zealand, which took the lives of 50 innocent people. And it took just six days for Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern to announce a nationwide ban on all military-style semi-automatic weapons. I can tell you one thing right now. Our gun laws will change. As an American, that's incredible and disheartening at the same time. It's like being Elon Musk and seeing someone move any of their facial muscles. <laughs> He's like, wait, you can just do that? <laughs> As New Zealand mourned, the NRA kicked into gear. You want to know the difference between the anti-gun left and us here at NRA TV? They call New Zealand's all-out gun ban of semi-automatic rifles, quote, what leadership looks like. We call it what tyranny looks like. But gun advocates didn't just criticize the prime minister. The world's most powerful gun lobby group, the NRA, has offered its help and support to gun enthusiasts here. The trouble is we have people like, for instance, the NRA poking their nose into New Zealand. They can bugger off. We have people, oh yes, I think so. <laughs> oh yes, I think so. <laughs> I love the way she said that. That was like the nicest way to say fuck off. <laughs> Out of curiosity, have we tried telling the NRA to just bugger off? We should just do that. One member of New Zealand's parliament was even sent material that appeared to be sourced directly from the NRA, accusing her of trying to take away their Second Amendment rights to own guns. The only problem is, New Zealand doesn't have a Second Amendment or the right to own guns. They just think every country has the right to own guns, including Africa, because they probably think Africa is a country. The NRA was more effective in Brazil, where gun violence has been rampant. In 2005, Brazil had about 36,000 gun deaths, which was even more than the United States. That year, Brazil held a voter referendum to ban the sales of guns and ammunition to citizens. So a pro-gun group reached out to the NRA for help, and the NRA sent a lobbyist. Now, the NRA denies funding any Brazilian pro-gun groups, but the NRA's messaging still made it into Brazilian ads. Now, you guys probably know NRA's talking point. Keep your hands off our guns and our freedom. No, 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 not that one, the other one. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Okay, we constantly hear about good guys with guns, and during the referendum, this ad coincidentally ran in Brazil. 
falam em desarmamento. They talk about disarmament. Mas esqueceram de combinar isso. Com But they forgot to tell the criminals. Querem tirar as armas do bem. They want to take away the good guns. Mas vão deixar as armas do mal. But they'll leave the bad guns alone. Isso não vai This won't bem. end well. Desarmar Disarming the citizens is not the solution. Vote against prohibition. Vote one. Vote no. That's insane. How did they get Ethan Hawke for that role? The NRA keeps trying to convince people in other countries that they have a right to own guns. But just like New Zealand, Brazil doesn't have the right to bear arms. The gun lobby just made it up. But it looks like these ads were still effective. Polls taken before the vote on the gun ban showed that 80% of Brazilians were in favor of greater gun control, but the law was defeated two to one. Brazil didn't pass gun control, and now their current president, Jair Bolsonaro, is rolling back what little gun control Brazil does have. Brazil's far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro, is reversing earlier strict regulations that essentially prevented civilians from bearing firearms. In order to guarantee the citizens this legitimate right of defense, I, as president, will use this weapon. Why are these guys obsessed with pens? Like, at least Trump had a Sharpie. Bolsonaro's got a classic Bic. Come on, man. Get a pen that doesn't have a bank chain on it. You can get that shit at Wells Fargo. Bolsonaro signed that legislation five months ago, and he signed another executive order easing gun rules earlier this month. Bolsonaro loves the NRA, and so does his son. Bolsonaro, as well as his son, who was involved in the campaign, have really made a big sticking point of their fandom, really, of the NRA. He has all these uh, gun replicas on the walls, uh, NRA signs. What's up, guys? I'm here in the USA. As you can see, a lot of guns. This is the famous AR-15, the devil's gun, AK-47, the terrorist gun, a 50. People call it a 50. You can bring down a plane with it. I like how bringing down a plane is his sales pitch for this gun. He's like, this baby can do everything. Uh, it can stop all the worst people, murderers, intruders, Delta. <laughs> like, why is he so obsessed with guns? Have you guys ever noticed this? Like, people who are into guns are really into guns. They're like swords. Nobody has one sword. You either have zero swords, or so many swords that your kids stop bringing friends over. There's no middle ground. The NRA's influence is all over the world. Brazil, Australia, New Zealand. But they don't just coach foreign gun groups. They help spread guns abroad without even leaving the United States. For the last 50 years, the NRA's US agenda has been about passing laws that make it easier to buy guns, own guns, and use guns. You've probably heard about these laws, concealed carry, preemption laws, and stand your ground which came into the national conversation after George Zimmerman gunned down Trayvon Martin. Now, I just want to take a quick beat to give you guys an update on what George Zimmerman has been up to, because it is fucking crazy. After he got acquitted for murder, he became a painter. <laughs> he sold a painting for over 100 grand. He tried to auction off the gun he killed Trayvon Martin with. He failed to sell the gun, tried again, failed again, tried a third time, succeeded. How? I don't know. That same year, got divorced, so he's officially on the market. He's like, look, I'm a multi-hyphenate. Um, I'm a killer, auctioneer, racist, part-time horrible artist, full-time piece of shit, no hookups, I'm looking for love. Now, that'd be a great Tinder profile if he hadn't gotten banned from Tinder. Oh, by the way, he also challenged DMX to a boxing match. DMX seems pretty chill about the whole thing, telling TMZ, quote, I'm going to beat the living f out of him. I am breaking every rule in boxing to make sure I f him up right. Once I am done with him, I am going to whip my f out and piss on him right in his mother face. Now, I know you're shocked by that, but you know who's not shocked by that? Anyone who knows anything about DMX, they're just like, damn, DMX is getting soft. <laughs> All the gun laws the NRA supports encourage the spread of guns in the US, but those guns are also making their way south to Mexico. 
Mexico points the finger at the U.S. for not doing enough to prevent an estimated 213,000 firearms from being smuggled into the country. <laughs> the impact of those guns is felt across Mexico. The murder rate this year is expected to surpass that of 2017, with more than 30,000 killings. 30,000 killings. And what makes that stat even more shocking is that Mexico only has one gun store in the entire country. I'm serious. We drive into this open military base and pull up right in front of Mexico's one and only gun store, what's formerly known as the Directorate of Arms and Munitions Sales. If they have one gun store, is it like Trader Joe's on a Saturday all the time? <laughs> like you go in and it's just like, oh shit. I was just trying to get a Glock and avocados, but this is nonsense. So yeah, come back on a Tuesday. It's better on a Tuesday. <laughs> All right, I'll come during my lunch break. Between 2009 and 2014, 70% of traceable guns seized in Mexico came from the U.S. And it's honestly impressive that we could get that stat because the NRA has lobbied to kill universal background checks and funding for tracking gun crimes. I mean, come on! America is never going to track guns. The only way we'd ever start tracking guns is if they converted to Islam. That's it. <laughs> And on top of that, the Trump administration has proposed something called the Arms Transfer Initiative, which could make it easier for U.S. companies to export guns and harder for lawmakers to get data on gun sales. And as someone who loves using government data to make 400 different graphs a week, <laughs> I'm personally upset by this. So not only could we have less information on where the guns are going, we also won't always know who the guns are going to because the NRA has also fought to keep straw purchasing laws weak. Straw purchasing is when you can't legally buy a gun so you get someone else to buy it for you. You know, the same way teenagers get four loco. Straw <laughs> purchasing is one of the main ways criminals acquire firearms, and it's something the NRA has fought for years. This gun was bought by two US citizens on behalf of a Mexican cartel. The investigation revealed a whole straw purchasing network but their charge was based on lying on the paperwork. So what you're prosecuting them for is the fact that they filled in the form wrongly? Correct. There is currently no firearms trafficking uh, statute that we can prosecute someone for. It doesn't stop there. A huge number of recovered weapons in Central America can be traced back to the United States. 29% of guns in Guatemala, 46% of guns in Honduras, and 49% in El Salvador. That's half of the traceable gun supply coming from America. And the gun violence in Central America is fueling the migrant crisis. Many immigrants say they're fleeing gang violence in their home countries. Rival gangs like MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang kill thousands per year. This 16-year-old fled with her two-year-old son. It was one of the toughest decisions of my life, she said. But I'm afraid for my son because of the violence and gangs here, so I had to try. That's heart-wrenching. And you would think that most people would understand that. But the NRA isn't most people. The immigration invasion is real. These people are coming here to do harm to Americans. They dismember, they mutilate, they torture. Until you can prove to me that our borders are closed, you know, and that no one's coming across with the intent to do harm or weapons, don't talk to us about gun control. But we have to talk about gun control. The NRA has had undue influence on American politics for the last 50 years. But if the New York AG's investigation finds that the NRA can't call themselves a nonprofit, that wouldn't just hurt their bottom line. We would finally be recognizing the NRA for what they are, a political organization with global influence. But that's just a hope. As it stands, the NRA's domestic push for loose gun laws is helping weapons flow to Central America, which is contributing to violence, which is causing people to flee that violence and seek asylum in the US which the NRA is using to sell looser gun laws. And this cycle shows no signs of stopping. Look, the NRA clearly loves guns, right? They obviously want to spread guns internationally, and yet they are panicking about immigrants invading with those guns. But maybe those immigrants aren't invading. Maybe they're just returning those guns to sender. 